Hey guys, this is Anthony Ciappone with Showroom Professional, and this is Tech Talk. So on today's Tech Talk, we're going to be going over what it takes to pick a video panel. You know, there's a lot of different terms out there like pixel pitch, brightness, grayscale. Do I need this for, uh, you know, outdoor festival, iMag, PowerPoint, corporate gigs? Let's go ahead and go over all the ins and outs of this so you can be more informed when picking your next video panel product. Let's talk about what we have behind me, okay? Starting from my left, um, we have the F3 right here. Right above it, we have the F2. Directly behind me and above me, we have the F5 IP. And directly behind me, we have four of the F6 strip IPs. Brand new product on the market, really great. Um, in the top right corner here, we have the F4 IP. And right below it, we have an indoor generic 4.8 panel, just for comparison's sake. Okay, so um, let me go ahead and give you a basic definition of something you probably heard already. Pixel pitch, what does that mean? Um, pixel pitch is defined as the distance in millimeters center to center between LEDs. This really, really gives you an idea of how many LEDs you have. Um, if you were comparing it to like TVs, it'd be your resolution, you know? Um, is that the only thing that we need to look at though? Absolutely not. We want to look at refresh rate. We want to look at brightness. And we really want to get a good idea of what kind of content we're going to be playing back on this. Um, you know, for example, we have uh, you know, panels that are designed for big outdoor festivals where you're going to be throwing you know, big screens up, and those are excellent for iMac, but they might not be the right solution for an indoor corporate event. All right, um, let's move on, and I'll show you the next item. First thing we're going to start talking about is brightness, indoor versus outdoor. The first thing we want to cover here is we want to talk about nits, all right? The brightness of video panels is rated in nits. This is candela per square meter. Um, this is the same rating that your phone brightness is rated in, your TV brightness is rated in, and projectors are rated in the same brightness. Okay, so just as a point of reference here, um, we have the same image sending at the same brightness to our F4 IP, and below it to our generic indoor 4.8 millimeter uh, panel as well. Um, the 4.8 generic is running at about a thousand nit brightness, whereas the F4 IP, we're pumping that up to anywhere between 4,500 to 5,500 nits, all right? So this is gonna be really great to punch through that direct sunlight, okay? So this is gonna be uh, incredible for festivals, outdoor events, even outdoor corporate events that, that are uh, occurring during the day, you know? Um, it's a IP65 rated panel, so it's definitely gonna stand up to the, 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 the weather, you know, whether it's dust or water protection. But the key thing here we're focusing on is brightness. So when it comes to brightness, if you're doing an outdoor event during the day, you want at least about 5,000 nits brightness. Bare minimum is 4,000, all right? Um, with that, let's go ahead and move on to another clip so you can see another comparison here. Um, this one right here, uh, on the first camera here, uh, I know that it's a little bit washed out because uh, the camera's adjusted actually to the lower brightness panel. But on the other camera, we have it set up in such a way to, where you can see it clearly, okay? Um, and you can see that even though on one camera it might look washed out a little bit, on the other camera, it's really crisp. You have excellent grayscales on this um, because you really have good quality drivers running this, okay? All right, guys, so the next thing we're gonna be looking at is pixel pitch. We have a comparison right behind us, remember the F5 IP right here and the F4 IP right there, okay? <laughs> um, these are a 4.8 millimeter pixel pitch and a 5.9, all right? Um, both outdoors, so the brightness is comparable, okay? Uh, what I wanna be looking at here is I wanna be looking at the differences between the content, okay? Content is gonna be a huge thing when you're looking at uh, selecting the video panel of your choice. Um, if you're doing motion graphics, generally speaking, Almost any panel, whether it's indoor, outdoor, small pitch, big pitch, it's going to be pretty similar. You're going to see the differences when you start moving into iMag or live action uh, footage, all right? So above me here, you can see uh, both of these are performing right around the same level with the motion graphics. Um, not a big difference. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, when you start moving into iMag, 
Um, this is a nice uh, stock uh, footage of a bald eagle behind us. Um, and it's looking pretty similar. It's really hard to tell the difference. The F4 IP is performing a little bit better than the F5 IP, but it's still pretty similar. Um, you really start seeing the difference when you move on to complicated iMac. Simple iMac like this, it's going to be pretty usable across the board. Let's go on to the next one. This is where you start seeing a, a difference, okay? So the F4 IP here, um, look at the dome. Focus on the dome, focus on the details, okay? Uh, generally, you get the same uh, concept of the video image for both of them, but if you look at the dome, you start seeing weird anomalies in the uh, glass. You start seeing weird lines that are appearing in the glass of the F5 IP. The F4 IP is reasonable. Um, keep in mind both of these when you start getting a bigger video wall it's going to be more comparable and you're not going to see this. It's, a lot of this is comparable to how small your actual video wall is. You know, We only have three panels of each uh, behind us here. If we're looking at 30 panels or 50 panels or 100 panels, the F5 IP is going to be perfect for the application. All right? Even the F4 IP is going to be really great. All right? So let's go to move on to our next slide. Um, right here, I just kind of wanted to touch on this one last time. Motion graphics, all of our panels are very comparable and they look very similar. So if you're doing motion graphics, you know, if you're doing just like uh, VJ stuff um, and this is your only application, if you're indoors, use an indoor panel. If you're outdoors, use an outdoor panel. Pretty straightforward there, okay? All right, so we're making some progress here. We're getting more and more into the guts of this. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and roll in the indoor panels and we're going to dial in a little bit more into the comparison of pixel pitch and what content is going to fit best on each panel, okay? Let's go ahead to the next slide there. Um, what we're doing here is we're actually bringing up the same slide we have earlier when we were comparing the 5.9 outdoor and the 4.8 outdoor. Um, and the, the F4IP did an excellent job when you were comparing just those two. But what we've done here is we brought in the F2 and the F3. And when you do that, you start realizing, wow, you know, as far as content replication and duplication, the F2 and the F3 do a much better job at a small wall, okay? And this is something else that we need to go ahead and uh, dial in to. Um, if you're doing like uh, corporate events or if you're doing like a small showroom or a small meeting room, um, and what you're doing is you're, small, is you're not gonna be able to have the opportunity to build a large wall. You need something that has a smaller pitch. That's because your viewing distance is gonna be a lot shorter, okay? Um, a good rule of thumb in our industry is take your pixel pitch, let's say two, three, four, five millimeter, add a meter for each of those, and that's your minimum viewing distance, okay? So for example, if my pixel pitch is uh, 5.9 millimeters, then your minimum viewing distance wants to be 5.9 meters from the panel itself to the front row in your audience, okay? So again, you know, a small room, smaller pitch. Bigger room, big outdoor festivals, bigger pitch is the way to go, okay? Um, let's go ahead and move to the next slide. In this clip, but what I want to point out is her dress. Um, go ahead and look at her dress primarily, and secondarily, look at her hair at the top here, okay? Um, so if you notice on the F2, um, you can see really clear details in her dress. You can actually see the sequins and all the individual uh, bits of light reflecting off of it. Um, and you can even see the reflections off of her hair very well. Um, however, if you look directly above me at the F5 IP, um, in the F5 IP, trying to replicate this particular image at this size, um, it's having trouble, and this is partially due to the pixel pitch, okay? Um, her sequins on her dress, they're far more animated and active than they are in the original clip. And this is one of the things you want to focus on, you know, how authentic are the video, are the, are the video panels replicating the original content, all right? And I would say for this particular image, the F2 and the F3 do an excellent job. The F4 IP does an okay job, but the F5 IP, I just don't think it's right for this particular application because it doesn't replicate this image properly. Let's go ahead and look at one more clip and we can go ahead and e examine some other items, okay? One of the things you're gonna notice is that um, this slide has a lot of details, very particular light 
um, reflecting off of the skin. That's going to be a uh, particular detail that's going to be difficult to see on a bigger pixel pitch, but it's going to be uh, really ideal for those smaller and those tighter pixel pitches of either 3.9 or 2.9, which is what we have here, okay? Um, so take a look at her hair. This, this particular model, her hair um, is a little bit blurry when you're looking at the 5.9 or the 4.8. Um, but when you start looking over at the 3.9 or the 2.9, um, that's when it really starts to look a lot more crisp. Uh, one of the particular details that I want to focus on is on the side of her face here, um, you actually have a, a reflection of light. This particular reflection of light is very difficult to see on the 5.9, the F5IP, or on the 4.8, the F4IP. Um, it almost looks like, um, like a flickering of the LEDs. But when you look at it on the F2 and the F3, you can really see it and you can know what that detail is. Um, so it has excellent reproduction of this particular video image. This video image is gonna be great for uh, 3.9 or 2.9, but it's really not gonna be ideal for the bigger pixel pitches, all right? Let's move on to the next one. Um, and these next two slides, what I wanna focus on is um, just terms that I like to call IMAG close shots and IMAG far shots, okay? Um, so let's, let's say you're doing a live event, okay? Um, and you have your iMag running, you got your cameras focusing on a guitarist on stage. When you have a single guitarist on stage, any of these pixel pictures are gonna work, actually. Um, the only one that seems to have a little bit of trouble with it is the F5 IP, still very excellent reproduction of the image. Um, the problem comes when you move into the, uh, the iMag far shot. So let's go to the iMag far shot. Um, in this particular image, it's definitely going to be problematic. Let's say you're using this for a live concert. You know, these concert goers, you know, they bought tickets to see who's performing. And in this image, I don't know if this is actually the person that I paid to see on, on stage or if this is just some stranger. You know, so in this particular image, uh, the F3 and the F2 are going to be good at reproducing this. You're actually still going to be able to see who's on uh, camera. Um, but, you know, uh, your F5 IP and your F4 IP, they're just not going to cut it for this one, okay? So this one right here, motion graphics, uh, general graphics, and text, okay? Um, general graphics, you know, logos, things like that, any of these are going to do the job very well. Um, the only areas of concern that I would have in these particular imagery productions is look at your V, okay? Look at the Chauvet V right there, okay? You see the edge of the V, it starts to become that, like that, that steppy look, okay? Um, and when you get that steppy look, you may have some clients, especially for your corporate events, um, if you start distorting the client's logo, they're probably not gonna be very happy, all right? So this is something you wanna um, pay close attention to, okay? Let's move on to the next one. Um, let's say you're doing a corporate event where you have PowerPoint um, and you have a lot of text that you need to be uh, reproduced. Or let's say you're doing a live concert uh, with on-screen lyrics or you're doing house, house of Worship with on-screen lyrics. Uh, if you're doing lyrics of this size, um, generally speaking, it's going to be okay. Um, it really starts to um, come into question when you do lyrics of the next size. This right here, um, Diego, if you can get some close-up shots here, uh, the F2 and the F3 are excellent for this the F5 IP really struggles, you know. You're going to have a hard time reading this on screen. Um, and if people are singing along, they're going to be singing along all kind of weird words. They're not going to know what's going on, okay? So definitely be mindful of this. Let's move on to the next one. All right, I want to reiterate, we're just kind of going over this a couple more times. Um, iMag close, single subject on screen. Any of these are going to be excellent for this application. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so this is going to be an example of a corporate event, okay? And this, in this stock footage here, uh, you can see the speaker above me. Um, if you zoom in close to his head, you can actually see he kind of looks like a character from Minecraft. Uh, you really don't know that he's an actual live-action person. Um, so this is something you want to be mindful of as well. Um, as a rule of thumb, uh, before you select your video panel, Get the content that you're going to be uh, projecting onto your screen and set up the smallest size that you're ever going to use of that wall and just see what it's going to look like, okay? Um, this is something you want to know beforehand, okay? 
So in this next clip, it is a prime example of a concert scenario where you have iMag and you have cameras and you have live performers on stage. So there are going to be things that you want to be careful about. You know, you are going to have light sources on stage that are going to try and wash out your image. All right, so go ahead and adjust your contrast and brightness as needed. But at the same time, you can see, I can see two or three performers in each of these, and I still see it pretty well. I have a hard time seeing the uh, bass acoustic guitar in the background there. Um, so that's something that maybe you want a tighter pixel pitch if you're having a smaller wall for your uh, stage here. Um, can, we, can we move to the next uh, clip, please? Um, so this one right here, um, you can see the backlight um, on the upstage side is even worse. Um, and in this particular one, because the camera's uh, pulled so far out, um, I can't even see the guitar strings um, on the acoustic guitar in the four and five mil. I can only see them in the three and the two mil. Um, and the texture on the guitarist uh, shirt, uh, I really have a hard time seeing that in the, uh, on the five and the four mil, but I can see it pretty clearly in the three and the two. All right, so these are things you want to be cognizant about when looking at the particular content you have and also when looking at the uh, size of your wall and the pitch that you're selecting for your event, all right? Um, so with this, I think we're going to close out our video. Um, I'm going to be hanging out on the line. I'm going to be uh, make, making myself available to answer any questions you might have, and we have the team here as well. If you don't get your questions answered, if you're watching this video after it's live streamed, uh, go ahead and email us your questions, and we'll answer them to try and help you out in your application, all right? Um, with that, my name is Anthony Ciappone with Sheriff Professional, and this is Tech Talk.